Let's go into the Zoom room where we have uh, Attorney Tom Fisher standing by. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Sabrina. Good morning. Pretty chipper uh, sounding for a guy who just lost a, a big trial Friday. Uh, Tom, let's just start there. So the jury returned, I mean, it was under two hours with a guilty verdict for your client. What was your um, reaction? Were you shocked that it took that fast or was it something that you saw coming? Uh, yes, but I'd also like to point out that it didn't take them two hours. It was actually much less than that. How that, long? Was one of the quickest, that was one of the quickest verdicts I've ever seen in a one month trial. I would say that uh, uh, to the extent deliberation took place, I would say it was uh, under an hour. So, yeah, to answer your question, I was shocked. Um, I follow the trial very closely, and I saw what you were uh, trying to do. Is uh, you were uh, trying to um, obviously get uh, Josh Belashus um, off the hook, but uh, you were also trying to um, talk about the motive and um, I don't know if conspiracy is the right word, but uh, I, I guess a plot of actors uh, who were involved with with Keith Castro's uh, murder. Um, did you feel that that was what was what was difficult for you? Was trying to simultaneously. Uh, prove that the trigger man was someone other than Josh Palacios and also uh, prove that there was a cast of characters who were involved um, with circumstances that led to his murder? He yeah, I think murder. that that's a very, uh, that's a very succinct uh, analysis of what we were doing. Um, in that trial, um, nobody established why Josh Palacios had any motive uh, to commit this murder. In fact, the evidence of motive uh, pointed at a number of different people. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the evidence um, that we had uh, the judge disallowed, so we weren't um, allowed to put it on. Um, I like the I like the fact that you chose the word conspiracy. You know that gets people all you know thinking of QAnon and all this uh, the, kind of the lunatic fringe. But um, you know. In the law, conspiracy is basically two people getting together and deciding to do something which is illegal. Uh, both sides are responsible for the conduct of the others that take place and are largely foreseeable within the conspiracy. So, um, you know, one of the major disappointments, uh, well, I, you know, if we're going to talk about this in kind of a meta sense, uh, the issue here is really um, this pandemic I know you, you know, we were just talking about COVID-19. There's yet another pandemic on island, and that is the use of crystal methamphetamine um, and the sale of crystal methamphetamine. And now, unfortunately, the manufacture of uh, crystal methamphetamine. It's, um, it's easily uh, one of the worst drugs ever, in, ever to come out of the mind of man. And it is just ravaging uh, the body of Guam. And we seem to um, be content to merely address the issue, uh, but not suppress the drug. So we want to, you know, it's like we want to we want to keep it just bubbling below the surface, and that's good enough for us. It's not good enough for us. Uh, this stuff is an extraordinarily dangerous cancer in our body, and it has metastasized. It is in every level of society. It's in every profession, including my own. Um, it is in every profession, including yours. It has migrated throughout Guam, and nobody seems to be seriously uh, looking at it. You know, uh, I guess it was about a year ago that the Mandania Drug Force uh, was uh, abolished. And as I recall, I, th I think we got rid of the Mandania Drug Force because we decided that it had accomplished its goal. I guess we won the war on ice there for... A couple of days. Um, so the drug force is gone. GPD does not appear to be seriously tackling the problem. Uh, the uh, the bar, the Guam bar, is not seriously tackling the problem. And I don't know that the medical community is tackling the problem. Um, we've gone about as far as we can, I think, with this therapeutic drug court idea and the hand holding and stuff. It's uh, it's an outrage. If we had the room to uh, you know, slap people on the wrist and massage them a little bit and give them uh, counseling and so forth. All right, I'm all for it. But we ran out of room. You know, the runway is gone. Um, the disease is rampant and it needs to be, uh, it needs to be absolutely quashed uh, without mercy, frankly. One of the 
one of the things, if, if you practice in the Superior Court and you attend one of the drug courts, uh, you will see people, first time uh, possession of crystal methamphetamine, a, a user amount, not a sales amount, although sometimes even an amount to sell, uh, people get they get a walk. You know, you, you, you obey yourself, keep your nose clean, you go through these uh, you know, various uh, counseling programs. And then uh, we're just gonna let, we're not gonna really punish you. We're just gonna hope for the best. Um, I think the time for that is over. Uh, I don't think that when, you know, our children, such as Keith Castro, and you mentioned your 17 year old son. And I understand there was a young lady in uh, uh, one of the Southern villages who succumbed to COVID. That's not the, COVID is not the only evil um, throughout this island, there is an equally dangerous one, and that is crystal methamphetamine. You can make it in your bathtub, basically. Easy thing to do. It's flowing into the island through the United States Postal Service and other, other things, and it's just got to stop. There's not really a choice here. Um, I would, um, if I were the governor, I would think I would call in Steve Ignacio and tell him that he is going to put together a vigorous, task force uh, that is going to do everything with, within its power with increased funding to eradicate the problem. I would also ask the legislature to uh, increase funding for the attorney general's office so they can hire prosecutors who have a specialty in uh, this particular uh, uh, type of prosecutor. I would add more positions and I would not go into court and allow my prosecutors to just plead these things out. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, sorry you used ice, but uh, you know, have a walk and keep your nose clean. Yeah. No, you're gonna have to do time. And uh, you know. Yeah, Tom, uh, I mean, uh, look with, with the uh, case of uh, Tomas Titano, right? I mean, so here's a guy who, um, you know, got a plea deal. Yeah. Um, some would say a sweet one, uh, but I mean, he basically beat Keith Castro uh, to a point where someone was able to walk up and, and shoot him, and um, he's getting out of jail in a couple months. Yeah, uh, you mentioned the word conspiracy earlier, and I just mentioned the fact that you need experienced prosecutors. Um, you know, hats off to Rochelle Canto. She got a she got a G in that. She got a guilt in that case. But unfortunately, the real result of that case is uh, one murderer walked and the other murder is undiscovered. Uh, that case should have been pled up as a conspiracy between a John Doe and Thomas Mark Titano. Thomas Mark Titano should have been convicted of murder, not given 18 months and walking out of jail this week. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's beyond a shame. And uh, I express sincere sympathy to the Castro family. It must have been extraordinarily painful for them to sit in that court hearing and hear how Thomas Mark Titano uh, beat Keith, even as Keith prayed for his life and asked for mercy and got none. So, uh, you know, those days have got to stop. Why in, why in heaven's name that case was charged the way it was is a mystery. I, I would suggest getting uh, the chief prosecutor on the line and why they didn't charge that up as a conspiracy is another mystery. Um, let's talk about that sure. sim that sim card, Tom. So apparently there was a sim card that, uh, through the course of the trial, we were able to learn uh, was in Keith Castro's possession, and you had uh, had a few people on the stand, and this sim card allegedly had uh, photographic and video evidence of just uh, what I had read was a whole bunch of stuff, right? Um, yes. And so I'm just curious. This trial revealed that that SIM card, which was in the government of Guam's possession, went missing. When, oh, when, when you get, that. Go ahead. No, the SIM, card, the SIM card did not go missing. The SIM, SIM card was wiped. There you go. Yeah, same thing, pretty much. It was wiped pretty clean much. while in the government's yeah. possession. So how do, how do we have something so egregious like that happen? Um, and... Like, what's the remedy for it? I mean, is there someone at the AG's office who watches these trials and says, oh, that's something we need to look into? Or is there someone at, at, at GPD who says, oh, this is something we need to look into? Because, I mean, it, it appears like it was the destruction of some very crucial and key evidence. I mean, that maybe wasn't even or could have been relevant to your trial and uh, Joshua Palash's, his, uh, trial, but 
Also, it seemed to uh, implicate that high-level people are making meth and smoking meth and doing all kinds of stuff. And when we had proof of it, the government wiped it clean. Let me talk about it's, a conspiracy. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I think you pretty accurately stated what happened. The SIM card contained images and information when it went into the government's hands. While it was in the government's hands, it was wiped clean. How'd that happen? I don't know. Uh, uh, who... Who particularly uh, may have had a motive to do it? I don't know. There's only one person. Uh, well, there's only one person I know of. This doesn't mean there aren't others, but there's only one person I know of who saw the contents of that SIM card. And um, a second person who testified in trial said it uh, contained, um, uh, I guess, uh, information of uh, government of Guam employees. I don't know who those employees are. Uh, involved in uh, the use of crystal methamphetamine. Uh, some um, some uh, evidence of uh, 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 criminal sexual conduct involving a child and so forth and so on, and it disappeared. Who had possession of the SIM card when um, the information was erased? I'm sorry, could you repeat that, Sabrina? Who had possession of that SIM card when the information was erased? The information was turned over by a civilian uh, in Tumon to a superior court marshal. The superior court marshal appeared to hold on to the card for roughly one week before it was turned over to an officer within the Guam Police Department. Thereafter, I understand that an FBI agent looked at the card and made a determination that there was no... Uh, nothing of evidentiary value on it. So whatever it was that the lady in Tumon who gave it to the Superior Court uh, had disappeared. Are you are you concerned? I mean, obviously you are. <clears throat> wait, but, wait, wait, did, okay. did, was the information erased when it was in the possession of the Superior Court Marshal or in possession of, did you say GPD? GPD, um, it, could have been, it could have been either agency, I don't know. I don't know which of the two. Right, but we we just uh, were talking this morning about some revelations that came out in the Mark Mayo drug trial, and these are familiar revelations about corruption uh, in the courts. Uh, they mention the marshals a lot. So when we have a case of, of this where you have some very damning evidence, I don't know how it ended up in a marshal's possession for a week. It's very questionable. But when we have the yeah. feds saying the court, your courts are corrupt, and then we have things like this happening... Why don't we see some kind of local action on it? Well, you'd have to ask yourself who has a motive to take action and who has a motive to see no action taken. I think, uh, you know, it's kind of the Occam's razor of the whole thing to figure out why these things are happening. Um, I would just, uh, I just emphasize that uh, it is everywhere. You know, if you're wondering why your bush cutter disappeared over the night, it's because of crystal methamphetamine. Uh, you're wondering where your truck went, crystal methamphetamine. You wonder why you, your uh, your child's a wreck. It's crystal methamphetamine. If you're wondering, you're wondering why, why your employees are not showing up, it's crystal mm -hmm. methamphetamine. I mean, we've we've saw the the murder of Keith Castro. The more recently, the murder of Andrew Castro. I mean, both these cases very drug related. Yes, yes. It's a. Uh, uh, you know, it's just a tragedy. And like I said earlier in your program, we have to take vigorous action against it or give up. There's not a, there's not a middle ground here. There's not a middle ground here. You can't negotiate with cancer. You can't, uh, you know, you can't, add, you can't ask cancer just to relax and sit down and things will be fine. Let's work it out. That's not the way it works. You have to excise it from the body. You have to kill the cancer cells. If you don't, you will die. Somebody needs to stand up and take action. You know, uh, how many times do we address each other and call Guam a paradise? Well, is it a paradise worth saving? Are our children worth educating? Are, are the streets are, are the streets to be safe for all of our use? Or are we just going to give up? I don't know. It kind of seems like we already gave up. I, 
Well, God, I hope not. You know, you have to keep fighting. You know, it's like in this case, right? You know, I mean, you're, I'm on this. I'm on this program this morning because of that uh, Josh Palacios case. And uh, again, hats off to the prosecutor. But it's like in that case, we're not going to give up. We're not just going to let that man rot in prison. We're going to get sentenced. We're going to file an appeal. We're going to the conviction's going to get overturned in the Supreme Court, and the next court is going to allow us to actually put on our evidence. So we look forward to that. It's just a, it's a shame that uh, Josh has to spend an additional time in prison for this. But, you know, that's the way the system works. And, and we're all here to defend this. It's one of the few bulwarks we have against this, this uh, disease that is breaking on our shores. So, um, so at the end of the day, you don't believe that Josh Palacios pulled the trigger? At the end of the day, I do not believe that Josh Palacios pulled the trigger. Clearly someone did. There's no question about that, but it wasn't Josh Palacios. Josh Palacios was never identified at the scene. Uh, Matt Sablon, who owned the house or was a resident in the house anyway, uh, identified <clears throat> the shooter as being the bald guy. Josh wasn't bald. A guy named John Babalta was originally identified as being the shooter. Uh, and just so on and so forth. And then we had actual people that had motive uh, uh, to do uh, what happened. And, uh, you know, a lot of that, it sounds like sour grapes, I get it, but uh, we weren't allowed to put on the evidence and we're looking for, uh, we're looking for round two. All right. So, so when you, you talk about actors in this case and you talk about a conspiracy, uh, there were uh, two bloggers you called to the stand and they pled the fifth for their involvement um, in this case. What's procedurally, let's say like I'm the attorney general and I'm watching this and I see something like that. Is there any type of action that gets taken when you have a revelation like that during a trial or no? Well, uh, you're referring to Troy Torres and Johnny Rosario. Uh, Troy is kind of a, he's got a, uh, his, you know, he's got this uh, local blog. Um, it's kind of, I guess it's got a, it's got its purpose in a democratic society. He's a muckraker. Okay, that's fine. Um, but he and Johnny both uh, took the Fifth Amendment, pled the Fifth Amendment. In other words, they asserted their constitutional right, a sacred right, not to be forced to give evidence against themselves. But you can't just walk in on the, off the street and say, I want to take the Fifth Amendment unless there's a reason that you believe you may imperil yourself criminally by talking so the presumption is although you can't use it against a person but if you assert the fifth amendment you are also stating that there is something for which i can be held criminally liable and for the most part you really can't explore uh, those uh, you know those sorts of things because you know you're, you're protected from doing so and you know a jury is never instructed oh the guy took the fifth therefore uh, you can assume he's guilty that will never happen but um uh, it would certainly, I would certainly wonder, uh, considering the entire context and considering the uh, the inflammatory, dangerous uh, words and statements that uh, Troy and Johnny put out on this uh, Facebook blog, uh, whether there was some involvement, whether there was some involvement, and you particularly, and that's I think particularly true. If uh, I don't know if anybody watched those videos, but. Uh, you had uh, Keith um, actually uh, suggesting that people were putting a hit order out on him. Uh, to the, whether or not there actually was a hit order, but one of the things we do know is one month after uh, Troy uh, and Johnny said these things about Keith, uh, uh, Keith died. That much we know. So is the AG going to look at that? I don't know. Uh, that's that's going to be up to them. Well, this is kind of a, a theme we were talking about this morning with uh, these uh, revelations again that come out about our local court system and why isn't anybody making noise about it on the local side, uh, save for an oversight hearing a couple years ago. Yeah, um, there should be. There absolutely should be an oversight hearing and not one of these things that start at 5 o'clock in the afternoon and is over by 7 and uh, we never hear another peep out of it. I don't understand how come the Guam legislature, if they're serious, about crystal methamphetamine and you know the functions and operations of the attorney general's office and the uh, gpd etc uh why do they not have an investigative hearing hire a couple of lawyers go through the evidence and have the lawyers posit the questions while the senators sit there and listen to it you know not, not a bunch of eyewash where everybody convened at five o'clock and then we're out the door at seven 
um, after hearing a, a bunch of blowhards pontificate about stuff. You know, <laughs> let's get serious. Let's do something. Well, we're not going to disagree with you there, Tom. So we're 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 you're going to appeal the case. Got it? Yes. Yes. And you're saying the AG uh, senator should definitely look into uh, corruption of the local court and then even some of the things that came out of this trial. Uh, we had a comment here. Uh, who's the person that the public should be asking about the wiped SIM card? Why isn't anyone working to find out who it is and punish the person? Well, again, it, uh, I think I would just repeat what I'd said earlier. You have to ask yourself who has a motive to do that and who has a motive to make sure that does not happen. Uh, you know, those are the ways to find your answers. Um, it, it certainly would be interesting. Um, we all have a, we have a right to live in a just and clean society. Uh, we have a right to be free of corruption within the police department, corruption with the Guam bar, corruption within the court system, uh, corruption within the executive and legislative branches. That is our right. The government belongs to us. And if our politicians, uh, you know, they don't want to take it up, they don't want to vigorously look at this stuff, well, then they're basically just saying we re they really don't care about the health of the people of Guam. Are they involved? How, how do we know, though, for a fact that there was anything really on that uh, SIM card? And I mean, we, I don't know who the, the woman is that you're referring to, but how do we yeah. know that she just said that and then she gave this SIM card and could there have been there was really nothing on it well yeah that's that's a possibility but don't you think that it merits looking at should we just should we just uh come up with a supposition and say okay well there's alternate explanations so let's just drop the question mm -hmm. no so uh, sabrina you may be absolutely right but it is a question that needs looking at how could they how could people be confident you know it's not it's not good for us to question the honesty of our government. If you question the honesty and the forthrightness and the rectitude of the government, you're basically saying that uh, we don't trust ourselves to govern ourselves. Yeah. And we, 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 we cannot, we cannot go down that path. Oh, well, I'm down that uh, path. I'm all the way at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, you're all the way at the end of it, but I'm sure, I'll, you know, you bring a parade of senators on and people from the executive branch and they're going to tell us how they're looking they're looking into this closely and then we're going to need more money for this and that and we're going to go for off-island training and all this other stuff uh no you're not you're going to, no, you're, not. you're going to stay home and you are going to do your work and you are going to expunge this disease from our body you know your 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 uh, your 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 junket to uh, New York City is just uh, that we don't do that anymore. We got anymore. a Zoom. There's a Zoom for that training. There's a Zoom for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Bree, you good? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Tom. I think at the end of the day, I I just don't want to live on an island where uh, people can cyber bully a man to his death and get away with it. I just am not comfortable with that. I don't know where we're heading as a, as an island, as a paradise, as you called it, that um, there are people in the highest levels of our government that condone this type of behavior. Amen. It's disgusting. Well, at least we still have the power of the ballot, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll see you in two years or a year. Uh, Tom, thanks. <laughs> Keep us uh, posted, right. please. Yes, sir. See you. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Take care. Oh, we forgot to ask him about the. Oh, Tom, are you still there? I wanted to ask just from Adriana, are you filing any amended um, actions in the district court relative to the uh, Pine Hop, the bar closure, uh, the business closure lawsuit? Yes. I would expect that. I would expect that because, uh, you know, the, the case got dismissed. Uh, Judge Bordaglio dismissed it, but he said we can amend the complaint. So uh, as of today, that's our intent, to amend the complaint, fix the problems the judge noticed, and refile. Uh, Francis Tedinko gave, gave us until the 19th of February. Uh, you know, oh, yeah, it's yeah, been yeah, so yeah. long, and just kind of since we're talking about old cases, was there anything else with the double pay issue? Yeah, that's in the Supreme Court right now. Uh, any movement? 
at all? Uh, well, all the briefing has been done. We're, we're, the next step is going to be the justices are going to tell us when oral argument will be. Okay. And uh, you know, we don't we don't have any control over that, but that's the next step: oral argument, and then we'll just wait for an opinion. All right. Right on. Thank you, Tom. All right. Adios. That's the uh, Tom Fisher. Good talk.